I'm uh, Brigadier General Tom Cosentino. I'm the uh, Deputy Commanding General for Regional Support uh, here at NATO Training Mission Afghanistan. I uh, did my meeting, had parked my car, did my meeting, uh, went off to another meeting at the uh, Army G1 which is important because the Army G1 was, was uh, mostly wiped out, their headquarters, during the attack, and was down in a meeting there and returned to the office uh, and found everybody gathered around TVs because the first of the planes had hit at, at the World Trade Center. And uh, so we were all watching the planes, uh, you know, watching the uh, uh, burning World Trade Center when the second plane hit. And it dawned on us at that point, like, this is a terrorist attack. I realized that my, uh, my briefcase and my lunch were still out in the car. So I went outside and walked out to my car, went through a little tunnel that, uh, that's by the Pentagon, had uh, recovered my briefcase and my lunch, and had just walked back into the south parking lot of the Pentagon when I heard a tremendous roar over my left shoulder and the plane flew right over my left shoulder, uh, hit the helipad uh, about uh, 200 meters away from me, where I was standing, and, uh, and then slammed into the building. And the force of, of the concussion literally lifted me up off my feet and slammed me down on the ground. Once I gathered my kind of senses and I looked at the building, the first thing I thought was everybody I work with is dead because there were flames and smoke pouring out of the building. So I tried to run back to the building, and, uh, and the security guards were, um, were pushing us back out, saying, don't come in the building, don't come in the building. And about this point, people started streaming out of the building, covered with blood or, uh, you know, singed smoke. And we started a triage uh, operation out in the south parking lot of the, of the uh, Pentagon. Uh, matter of fact, one of the it, it was interesting. At, at one point, uh, a woman covered in blood was being carried by somebody. Uh, you know, leaning on she was leaning on somebody, and uh, I heard a voice yell, "Give me a hand!" And I went over to help with her and to lay her down. And the person on the other side of the woman was Donald Rumsfeld. That one wedge of the Pentagon was the only one in the building that had been renovated and reinforced with steel. The rest of it was just limestone piled on top of each other because it was built during World War II, and all the steel was used uh, to build battleships and tanks. And as a result of that, the floors held, and the people I worked with were able to flee, and they fled to the center courtyard of the Pentagon. And I was the last unaccounted for person. And the last that anybody knew was that I had been down in the G1 office on the ground floor, which was destroyed. And the uh, G1 of the Army, whose office I had been in um, 25 minutes before the attack, Lieutenant General Maud, had been killed in the attack. You could truly say that it was a day that changed my life. Um, and. Um, you know, uh, I knew General Maud. Uh, I knew a lot of the people in the Pentagon. Um, my son had a uh, uh, one of his best friends that he went to high school with. Mother was a flight attendant on on the plane that hit the Pentagon, and uh, she had a uh, uh, sad story. Uh, her name was Michelle Heidenberger. Uh, she normally flew on Mondays. But that was her son's birthday, so she took, she switched flights, and she was home on Monday, and she flew on Tuesday. I want to, I, I want to make sure for their legacy that this never happens again to us. Whatever I can do, and and I think it's clear in Afghanistan that um, that the reason that we came here was to make sure that this country could never be a safe haven for terrorists again. The reason I'm still in a uniform um, is uh, because, you know, my son stepped up to do this mission too, and I felt like if he was going to step up 
uh, and make a choice. I was already a soldier, a career soldier, when 9-11 happened. He made the choice to, to, to come into the military uh, to serve after the country had been at war for four years already. So when he made that choice, I decided to, to stick with it for a little bit longer. And, uh, uh, and I do think of those people who lost their lives and want to make sure that, uh, that they're remembered by, uh, through the peace and security that we bring to our own people. And that's